Next, may I introduce Venerable Hui Kian. She is the abbess of Sunyata Meditation Centre and has the very clear goal to teach others how to realise their full potential through Zen Buddhism. Venerable Hui Kian had an interesting and diverse career as a teacher, children's librarian and coordinator of Ethnic Child Care Resource Unit. As an advocate for access and equity, she had worked in the area of social welfare, particularly in the Vietnamese community in Western Australia. When the most vulnerable Thich Tan Tu came to Perth in 1996, she was fortunate to attend his lecture, Why Am I a Buddhist? She found out that Buddhism could give her five things that she had always been searching for. Wisdom, altruism, freedom, equality, and emancipation. She wanted to become his disciple and follow the path that he had illuminated. Hence, her first ordination occurred in 1998, and we're very lucky that she's here today, especially for our talk. Welcome, Venerable. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ariel. Uh, good evening, brothers and sisters in the Dharma. I think we will start with your meditation first. Half an hour, is it? One hour? Half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do your own meditation as your regular, but I can brief you how I do it. Uh, we can. Uh, we have four posture: sitting, standing up, walking, or lying down. Lying down is not recommended because you know, right? <laughs> and uh, walking is good, but for a number of people, we cannot do the walking here. And standing up is a bit tiring, but I do it when I am waiting for the bus to come. So today we can do the sitting down. For us, we sit down either cross leg in the lotus sit uh, situation, full lotus or half lotus or no lotus at all. You can just sit as long as it's comfortable. The main thing is that your back should be straight up, but not too straight, because if it is too straight, you will be in pain here, but not too hunched over. So just straight, just nicely straight, so we don't get the back pain or the chest pain. And my master, Thich Thanh Tử, he's still alive, he's in Vietnam. He's now 100 years old. And he recommend us to sit on a cushion about that high, so that will alleviate your back and help you not to get sciatica in the future. If you sit flat on the floor, it's very painful. And that is the way we sit. And before we sit, before we enter the meditation, we have a good position, comfortable position. Just comfortable, not too comfortable. Because if too comfortable, you tend to snore. <laughs> but so just when you feel comfortable a bit, we do the big, deep breath down to the diaphragm. Slowly take on the fresh air in to nourish your body. And then slowly blow out, all out. That's the first deep breath. The second deep breath at the middle, the same. You breathe in, and when you breathe in, you think aloud that I am bringing in fresh air to nourish my body and you think from top to toe. And then when you blow out, you think aloud that I am blowing out all disease and anxiety, particularly anxiety. And the third deep breath is when you breathe just 
a little bit longer than your normal breath and the same thought. And after that, you enter the meditation. And when you are in the meditation, you just breathe, breathe in and blow out normally your normal breath. You either, when you breathe in, you can count one. And blow out, count two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and go back to one. Keep doing one set of ten and go back to one. And if you miscount, always go back to one. So that is how we do it. But if you progress, you don't need to do the counting. You just breathe in and realize that we are breathing and realize that I am blow out. Breathe in and blow out. Follow the breath, and we call it awareness meditation. You got it? So we can start with the three deep breaths. The first one, very deep down. Second one, a little bit middle. Third one, a little bit longer than your normal. And now I'm asking you to listen to the chant of the evening gatha. You do breathe in and blow out normally. You are entering the meditation. Can I have the chant, please?
at the thought arise. Do not follow it. Do not suppress. Focus on your breath and your count. Counting from one to ten and go back to one. If you miss count, go back to one. Breathe in and blow out. Fully awake and fully relax. Relax and awake. Focus on your breath. Don't follow the thought. Don't suppress it. Realize that it's coming, but let it go. Breathe in and blow out. Relax and awake.
we exit the meditation by doing again the three deep breaths, but this time the other way around. The first one is a little bit longer, the second at the middle, and the third at the deepest. And also we still do the thinking aloud that I'm bringing in fresh air to nourish my body. And when I blow out, I blow out all disease and anxiety. So we can do the three deep breaths. At the same time, you can shake your body. And the third one. After that, we give us a good massage from top to toe to release the body, to help with the blood circulation. You can do it at home. <laughs> because we always spend around 20 to 30 minutes to do a thorough massage. The, the older I am, the longer I do it. Apparently, I give myself one hour massage. Because after that, I can do some uh, Kung Fu <laughs> breath. And that's help with the circulation. That's how we do it. Any question in regard to the meditation? With our way, we try to avoid the two situations. And we always have a supervisor to go around with a long stick. And if everyone knows or snore, and that's easy sin, he give a whack. That is the first one. It's very easy because when you meditate well, you sit well, very comfortable, you sleep, and he come, he walk. And that walk, even the stick is very long, but you don't feel the pain, only the sound. And that helps the actual person as well as everybody in the floor that wake up other people. That's the first we try to not to do. But easy correct it, because a supervisor can see it and help you to do it. And traditionally, when you get a work like that, you thank him for helping you to wake up. Second situation is you dream, bravery, dream, you sit here but your mind is at home and following everything, what he's doing, what she's doing, everything in your mind. And that is shown in your face. And again, he give you a whack, so you wake up. And that's easy to correct, both situations. The third one is a very bad, and the supervisor doesn't know. And that's why it's very difficult to correct the slumbering. Before the meditation, I told you that be fully awake. Fully, fully awake. Meaning that you sit here, comfortable. You know everything happening. Your ears still hearing, except your eyes resting. You don't see, but you might see the shadow as well. You know, on the sixth sense, open. The reason why we sit down is to help the other four senses, the other five senses, stop, close. But the idea, the thinking still working, and working fast. And it's run like a, what do you call it? A wild horse or a wild monkey, and you follow it. 
You follow from A to Z. It leads you everywhere, and your face is shown. That is a, that's slumbering. Your face doesn't. You just because when you snore, you dream. But the slumbering is you don't dream. You are half awake, half sleep. And if you meditate for about two, one, two, year, two, three years, you will be falling into that third category. You slumber, half, half. You think that you are really meditating because it is very nice. But apparently, no, because you are only half awake, but half asleep. So that is uh, the only person who knows is yourself. And when you are in that situation, and if you realize, uh, you want yourself to wake up. You tell yourself, wake up, I am meditating. Wake up. Okay? Any question regarding the meditation? Other than that, we start. I'm here to share with you the learning and the practice. I am a, I'm a student like you. My master is the most venerable Thich Thanh Tư. He's in Vietnam and he's still alive. He's a hundred years old. By the way, the chant is done by one of my brothers in the Dharma. The reason I ask him to do it, he's in Adelaide because I, don't, I cannot chant. I have no voice to chant the long like that. And also, my English is my second language, or third language. So he's Australian, and he's, he ordained a bit after me. So he, he's very nice to send me, record it, and send me over. And I send it to Ariel to do it today. Is it clear? You understand it? Yeah. It's very helpful. Thank him. His name is Thich Thong Phap, Venerable Thich Thong Phap. So we, I'm here to share with you, apart from how we meditate, I share with you my learning and my practice, how I do it every day. We learn the first, the first lesson is Prasnya Paramita Sutra. Prasnya is the wisdom. In there, the first sentence is, when Bodhisattva Avalokitesvara was practicing profoundly the Prasna Paramita, he illuminates the five skandhas and sees that they are empty, so he grows beyond all sufferings and difficulties. So our aim of learning meditation and practice the Buddhism is we cross beyond the sufferings and difficulties. Is it correct? We, we complain that we suffer and we want to end that suffering. So in the Prajna Paramita, Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva already cross beyond that. How? because he illuminates the five skandhas and sees that they are empty. What are the five skandhas? The form, the form, the feeling, the thinking, the formation, and the consciousness. They are the five skandhas. And the sutra said that they are empty. Empty is not in the sense of uh, empty or full. It's not the opposite of full. We have to see further deep down. It is only a metaphor. I think that even translating in English, sometimes it is not exactly like the, the, uh, the word, the Buddhist word want to carry. But anyway, if we see that the house, the house should be empty, so that is the opposite of full, isn't it? So we can store 
the furniture and people. And that is the empty we understand quite in general term. It is not that way. Though it is that empty, but it's not the sense the Sutra wants to tell us. This, because this is empty, this is empty, and this is empty also. So how can you see this one is empty? Now, talking about the house, before you build up the house, it is a piece of land, flat, and you make a contract and that is a build with brick and so many things. And then the house is a form. And for so many years you live in this house, 10 years, 20 years, after renovation, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, it's all, it's ruined, and it's collapsed. And that is no house. Remember, before, it's no house. It's a land. You build a house, and now it's collapsed, no house. That empty is in that sense. Got it? Got it? Yes or no? <laughs> empty. So how can you call this one empty? You can see this one empty, this one empty, because that is a piece emptiness in the sense that everything is not an entity by itself. It is a getting together of so many things, like the house. It got to be built by bricks and so many things. So what about here? It is empty too because another sutra, the Diamond Sutra, says that Buddha said everything which has the form, it is empty. Empty in the sense of not true. How can it's not true? If you hit yourself, you get a pain. But it's not true. So everything which has a form, it's empty, it's not true, it's a false. Why it's empty? Remember, it is a getting together. The body is a form by, you learn it, you know it, by the four elements, isn't it? And that's why it's form. So if we understand that emptiness, any question about that empty? Right? Before it has a glass, it has no glass. They have to make it with a sand, everything processing, and then you have a glass. Got it? Huh? So if you understand the meaning of empty, you will understand the meaning of impermanence. Before the house looked Nice, one million dollar house. It is a piece of land. And people put things in and build it up. And then after years, no matter how luxurious, how big even the palace, after 100 years or 200 years, it collapses. So from when it is born, it grows, and it vanish. So if you understand the empty, you understand the impermanent. Got it? Any query? So we understand that we are born, we get old, we get sick, and goodbye. You reunite with your grandparents and ancestors. Okay, you came and caused a lot of trouble to yourself and to everybody, and then rest, not willingly or willingly, and then reunite with ancestors. This is a process. And that is what Buddha teach us. And if we understand that, we should not 
be in pain and suffering, isn't it? Remember, he, the Bodhisattva illuminates that the five scandals are empty. So he grows beyond sufferings and difficulties. We understand, we see that they are empty. Why we are still suffering? Do we understand the emptiness? Yes. Do we understand the impermanence? Yes, we understand. Yeah? Understand. We know, we understand. We learn, we know, we understand. Why we still suffer? Does he lie? No. Right? So how? Why? Because we are what? Stubborn. We understand is one way, is one issue. Whether we do it is another issue. We obstinate. Right? That yes, that's empty. That death might happen to someone else, relatives, neighbors. Not un they don't know. They deny, keep denying, denying, denying. So that is a learning. So how can we wake up? We need to wake up to do it, to practice it. Really practice the emptiness and the impermanence to cross beyond the, suffer the sufferings. How do masters, Zen masters, there are so many ways to practice. Buddha said so many ways accordingly because there are so many levels of understanding among the people. You don't understand the same, the same level. Even in one classroom, there are 40 children and one teacher, the teacher does the teaching to all the students, but they get it differently, right? So that's why Buddha gave us so many approach, and there is a, no approach is better than the other. There is a, no, not as a such. It's just only appropriate or fit this person, and that approach might fit with Mr. A, but doesn't fit with Mr. B. So that's why you have the freedom to choose your approach. I choose the Zen, Vietnamese Zen, because in 1996, my master, the most venerable Thich Thanh Tư, he came over and he explained about what Buddhism is and why we practice it. I am born in a Buddhist family. We call it Buddhist because every year on the first day of the year, we come to the temple, burn incense, and do some offering, and that's it. We go home. And every month on the first day, on the 15th day of the month, we are vegetarian, and that's it. We call it Buddhist. We don't learn the text, we don't learn anything. So that is not good. We follow but don't understand. So luckily I met my master, he came here, he explained. So a year after I went back to Vietnam and learned in his temple and get ordained by him. So how back to the teaching in the ancient time, some uh, patriarch or big master, how do they teach? There are so many approach to the purpose of the teaching is what? To wake you up that this is impermanent. There's no point to hold on to it tight and suffer because it's gone, isn't it? 
one of the issue of the suffering is you lost it. You lost things. You lost people. Yet we understand very much about the emptiness and the impermanence. No one can last forever. No thing can last forever, including your thought, because the five skandhas is the form, the feeling, the thinking. So many thinking is a formation, and then your idea, consciousness. They are all getting together. But if anyone say that you are wrong, you are not happy. I am always right. So how do the patriarch, the own master, wake you up to let you see that there is no right, no wrong? Because you obstinate in the wrong or in the right. That's why you argue. And if you don't win and you suffer, again, win and lose, we always deal with these opposite. Uh, acclaim and humiliate, happy and unhappy, right? So how can they teach you? How can they? There's so many, many. And in particular, the Zen tradition, there's so many masters as well, let alone other schools. So talking only the meditation, some patriarch teach nicely, some teach very roughly, some give you a whack, some kick you, some scream and you get pierced, and some even give you, in the ancient time, they give you a koan. Have you heard of the word koan? Some uh, word uh, for you to ponder until it breaks. And if it doesn't break, you don't get anything. The famous koan is, anyone know? You tell me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now we talk about that, okay? What is a sound that is a famous of a uh, Japanese? Famous? What is a sound of one hand clapping? What is the sound of the one hand clapping? You tell me. Normally, and what is the meaning of that? <laughs> what does he want to show you? This is a point, okay? Now you have to see that all the big master, they are very, I don't know, very... They don't tell you straight. They just tell you differently for you to think. All right? Yeah. I'd rather just tell me, okay? No, no. What is the sound? Normally, how do you... The sound makes it a two hand, right? Do you hear the sound, or what do you hear? The teaching is here. I break the rule because normally we don't decipher. <laughs> we hear the sound of the clapping. The clapping needs two hands. All right? The clapping needs two hands. When do you clap? Under which situation you clap? Hooray, hip hip. Yeah? Hooray, hip hip. Or, ooh, 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 is it? Yeah? You cheers or you jeers. Right? Two ways. And do you hear the clapping? No. You hear the hooray. Got it? You hear the acclaim. So you are so proud and so happy. Or you want to. Hide your face if you hear the cheer. And that's why, what is the sound of one hand clapping? One hand clap doesn't give you the sound. That pull you to hear the sound, not the expressions of the sound. There is no acclaim, no, no humiliate. 
Got it? Click? No. No. <laughs> okay, then keep pondering what is the sound of one hand clapping. Normally, how? Because uh, the master tend to teach you, to awaken you through the six senses, the hearing, the seeing, the talking, the touching, the thinking, right? And all these uh, help you. And some scream, that is a sound. And that is a one hand sound. Or another famous one, prior to that one hand clapping. Anyone know? Who are you before your parents were born? Have you heard of that? Now tell me, who are you before your parents were born? Who are you? Who are you? Click? No click. <laughs> anyway, who are you? That is to teach you that are you a somebody or are you a nobody? I am a body, just a body. Not a somebody, nor the nobody. You are the body. And the body is a form. And the form is empty, is not true. So do not obstinate. Do not see that I am right and you are wrong. Let go of that obstination. Always the teachings aim at helping us to let go, let go. Got it now? Yeah? Click. Any more? Go on. Any more? How do they teach you? There is another famous Zen master. Everyone dare not to come close to him. And anyone dare not learning from him because he doesn't teach you anything at all apart from swearing. I said swearing is a swearing. Right? When I first came here, I don't understand these are swearing. Yeah, but you people, you local people, teach me. <laughs> yeah? So, but one guy, he's very brave. He come and he learn. And as a student, you stay with your teacher. And the most learning is staying with the teacher. You know, but he doesn't learn that way. He keeps serving the teacher, hoping that the master give him some what, some teaching. Right? Again, if you understand teaching is a classroom on the board and teaching, that doesn't apply to the Zen masters. But he hope and he wait for long and he cannot learn anything. So one day he picked up on his strength to come close to the master and ask him, Master, give me some words. And the master gave him a swear. So he re retrieved in tears. And then he thought that maybe the master, he doesn't do a good service, so the master swear at him. For a long time, he come again, please, Master, teach me something. The Master again swore more. He retrieved, and so pain, so pain. Last time he picked up, this is the last time, okay? I come, Master, please, give me some uh, words. He picked, he, again, he got, Three poems where 
He got down. He said, Master, I don't need that. That happens every day. I go to the market. People swear at me. Now I am your student. I need studying. I need you to teach me Buddhism. I don't need this. So what is the master react? He pulled the guy close to him, picked him up, looked at his face, gave him a last swear, and put him down. Do you call it swearing? Click. You want me to swear at you? <laughs> Do you want it? Swearing or not swearing, that swearing word or another word, like a mother, like a father, like everything, is it the same sound? Is it the same? Why you see this one is a swearing? Why the other one not swearing? You, because you hear behind the word, they are all words, and words are empty. Got it? A little bit. Yeah? yeah? So if you trust these things, if you understand, and if you practice that way, you got to be smiling all the time. No matter what they call you, you are shocked, you are sting, you are whatever. Yes, I am not tall. <laughs> yeah, I haven't washed, but even after the shower, you still sting because you sweat. So that is normal. Whatever they said, criticize, because you take it as a criticize and take it as a plot. And that's why you let yourself manipulated by these people. You know, the last word Buddha taught us before he died, his students on these uh, arat ask him, how should we learn now? How should we practice now when after you die? Buddha said, you are your own teacher. You do it. The learning is here. You learn enough. You just practice, and you do it, and you can see it. You are your own teacher. So what do we do daily? And we complain that we suffer. Instead of being our own teacher, we are our own slave. Is it correct? We are slave. We allow these wrong thinking lead us everywhere. What that? I give you this picture, and that is the practice of one master. He has two fans, one fan. He put, he put it up, and he said, boss, boss, another fan. He put it down, bring another fan. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Have you heard of that? No? Don't allow to be cheated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got it? Yes or no? Yes. We allow these things, which we call it desire, cheat us, lead us everywhere, and manipulate, and we work hard for that. They are our boss. Why? We have to be the boss. And that's why Buddha said that we live and turn upside down. We see the wrong thing and we treasure the wrong thing. The wrong thing is uh, everything is impermanent, but we treasure it. The thing we need to treasure, we forget it. We lose it completely. And we live with the empty, the fact of one. And that's why we suffer. You got it? We have two minds. The true one is 
what is, uh, like I say, tranquil and luminous. We forget it. We live with the running mind everywhere. Everywhere. It leads you to everywhere today. You need to buy, what do you call it? Right? Uh, uh, the woman next, next to my desk wears something. I need to wear more. And always compete, always like that. And create jealousy and create all the suffering. And that's why all the master give you so many corn, so many things like that. We learn it, ha <laughs> ha, we don't understand. Or if we understand, we don't do it, ha <laughs> ha we don't do it. And we keep, you keep listening. You are luckier than me because you come here every Friday. You learn from this, from every, from so many monks and from so many nuns, all right? What you need to learn is from yourself. From yourself. You have to see yourself. I used to, what, do we have the time now? <laughs> I used to go to the uh, prison because uh, they need a meditation teacher. The reason is uh, they are very angry for a very little thing they can fight. And you can see I'm not tall. Yeah. I don't like the word short. <laughs> That's why I suffer, you see? <laughs> very little. And they own big block. Forty of them. Only one single block can give me or one finger. I cannot walk even, let alone forty of them. Listen. And they said that they cannot sit still. They cannot meditate. They say, all right, no worries. You can breathe. For three minutes, you can breathe in and blow out. Breathe in and blow out. And one guy said that I'm very angry. And the reason I'm in the prison because I I have my best friend, the only friend, and we are very friendly. One day that friend told something, I was angry, I gave him a punch. And without knowing, that punch killed him. And that's why I am here, okay? I said, okay, I can give you my practice. Yeah? I am a human too. If you say something, I might be angry too. But I know not to punch, but even if I punch, there's nothing happened anyway. So I said, what, how, how? I said, did you know how to boil water? Anyone here know how to boil water? Make a cup of coffee? Make a cup of tea? I bet you, who said that, you know. <laughs> Hands up. Who knows? You know. Okay. How do you do it? <laughs> no, I don't cheat you. Right? <laughs> no, no, I'm run, no cheat. How do you do it? Huh? Yeah. You need to have a water boil. Right? So how do you boil the water? Yeah, you use a kettle. Very good, the kettle. <laughs> now that's the thing. And then you put, you put the kettle into the uh, tap. No, but I mean you boil the water. You need the boil water to put into your cup. So how do you boil your water? You put the, you put the water in the tap into the kettle and you switch it on and then you wait. And then how do you know that the water boiled? Ah, yes! <laughs> what do you hear? Uh, whistle. That's right. We talk about the whistle, okay? You hear the whistle and you know that it's boiling, okay? And you can pour the water into your cup. Before the kettle whistle, do you hear anything? Yeah? Oh, yeah? 
Yeah? That's what it is. Before the ketong, whistle, you heard and whistle, isn't it? That's it. Very good. You know how to boil the water. Okay? <laughs> yeah! Hooray! <laughs> Now you hear the sound, do you hear the sound or you hear the horror? You tell me? Yeah, don't be so proud because everyone knows how to boil the water. <laughs> now, back to the... Now, instead of watching the kettle, you apply it to yourself. Listen to yourself. Listen how you feel when you encounter everything outside on the daily life. Everything you see, everything you hear, right? You listen to yourself. Don't listen to the hore. Listen to yourself. And you can feel your bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. And if you heard that, you switch off, and the anger gone, right? And you don't have to punish your friend, and then you don't have to go to the prison to learn how to manage your anger, right? You are your own teacher. You can teach yourself to be calm, because whatever he said, if it is true, thank you, you correct it. If it is not true, you just laugh. Nothing. Because you don't lose any kilogram of the flesh. Nothing whatsoever. So that's how you see. Because you value the critics. You want to be in the right. I'm always right. Anyone criticize you, you don't like it. And that boiling, right? Don't let it whistle. Just stop at the bubbling. So anyone should know how to boil the water from now. You are, we are the kettle. Look at the kettle. And that is my practice. I listen to myself rather than being led by others. Got it? Click. Can you apply? Very easy, very simple. Simple, simple, simple is nothing can be simpler. Because that's why Buddhist teaching, and he's very correct, very scientific, and very practical. We can do it. He can do it. We can do it. That's what he said. Only use your wisdom, and you can do it yourself. Normally, how do we live? We live with one side. Or more some, some people is more dictator. We have a story of an iron bed, the bed. Right? In the ancient time, they, uh, people who are strong, they can stop the passengers and demanding money, isn't it, to pass by. But this guy, he doesn't, he did not demand money. He just put the person he caught onto his bed. If the person is longer than his bed, what does he do? He chop it. But if the person is not tall, like my size, what did he do? Yeah, he stretched it to make it as his bed. Understand? Is it that's the way we do every day? We make people do my way. Right? And that's why create a turmoil, create argument, create fight. We don't live in calmness, in joy and harmony. We need to share and care. 
but not that. And that you can see everywhere, at work, at home, even in the temple, particularly in the kitchen. Is it correct? Yeah. I'm come here, I donate, I offer, and suddenly she gave or he gave himself a right to order people around and to make people doing my way. Is it true? Back to the understanding of emptiness and impermanence and apply it, practice it. Don't just learn, understand, and stop at that. If you don't practice, you learn, you understand, you know, you are a book carrier. Right? There is a difference between a scholar and a practitioner. The scholar can talk, 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 and give explanation so many things according to the book, but he doesn't do anything. He still suffers. And if we suffer, you know what? We live in the cycle, isn't it? The samsara. I don't need to go into details because you know. You know? So if we don't exit, if we don't get out of it, you know, then we just live in the cycle, coming back and learning and knowing no practice. I tell you a story about the practice, and that's how we are. There is a sister and a brother, in the Asian way, okay? The Asian way is a big sister look after the uh, brother, whether brother or sister, the young sibling. Everything in the house, she does it for him, everything. So he lives, they live happily together, but everything, the sister do it, care for him. What he does, he study, come home, have everything ready there, eat and sleep and enjoy, and that's day in and day out. One day, the sister has to go somewhere all right, for a couple of days. And then, at that time, we have no fridge to store food, like now. So the sister told him, you need to cook for yourself, so you have a proper meal to eat. And she explained everything from A to Z and where things are, what to do so you can have a meal. And got it? Understand? Yes, I know it by heart. I can tell you. Da, 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 da. Okay? But the sister is a very careful. She even write down from one to da, 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 da. rise is in there and why, what to do. Okay gave him a letter and stick on the table. After she came back for a few days, four or five days, what she saw? A starving boy. You know why? He doesn't do it. He wants meal, but he doesn't cook, he doesn't do it. And he complained that, I am starving. But the sister, I give you instructions. And he said, yes, I know it. And he recited from A to Z. Is it us? Yeah? Click. OK. Any question? So we just apply. Teacher, give us, doesn't give us anything except a clue. Except only a clue. Like the guy who crying because of his, the teachers are swearing. There's another a story about the master. He has a student. And that student is, uh, actually he's a third patriarch. He's a seller, he has a little stone selling dumplings. You know the dumplings, the Chinese dumplings. 
every morning, every early morning, the students before he sell his food to people, he brought it to his teacher very nicely and respectfully, please accept my offering. And the teacher not take it and give it back to him. Half, half, or sometimes uh, two, three, or something, just give back to him and take only a little. Day in, day out, like that. Very nice. This one doesn't give any work, just only accept the offering. One day, the student came and asked the offering, please, Master, teach me something. Hey, the teacher taught him. Hey, see? The teacher said that I have taught him. Haven't I taught him? Haven't I taught you? Yeah. What? And when? <laughs> right? And the teacher said that every day you gave me the dumplings. I take it. I note it. And that note means thank you. And then I gave some to you. Haven't I taught you? Huh? And what is that teaching? Very simple. The appreciation, the sharing, the caring. If we do it with our surroundings, is it peace and joy? Yes, very simple indeed. But yet, we don't know. All we do is uh, compete and jealous. And that way, we turn around to complain that we suffer. Life is a shock, impermanent. So take the chance that we are in the body form. Because when you recycle, you might be in another form. Yeah? So take this opportunity to learn, to share and care. And that's how we live in peace and joy. And that is the harmony. That is the teaching of Buddha. Nothing in the air, nothing myth. You know, it just, if you understand that, you have a true mind, and you do. So live with your true mind. Don't allow to be cheated. Don't live with your running mind. This is a fake one. This is empty. This is impermanent. This is a not us. This true mind is us. But yet we forget it. We forget it so long. How many years have we been born? We forget from the day we were born. Or oh, actually, we forget from the previous life. That's why we come back and then we sit in the dark. Yeah? I give you the story. In the ancient time, have you heard of Vilama Kuti? That is a lay person at Buddha's time. And he's a very good, his knowledge is uh, same like uh, Buddha's uh, students, the Arahat. One day, he came to visit Buddha in the Kuti. And our Mahakayip, the top student of Buddha, is there watching and saw him getting out from the market. Right, getting out from the market. And he come and he pay respect to Mahakayip. Mahakayip respect him. 
and ask him, where do you come from? Knowing very well that he come from the market. Vimala Kirti said that I came from a temple. You big liar. I saw with my proper eyes that you came from the market. How dare you say so to me? So what is the answer? He said, Sir, I'm living in peace and joy. Come, I live in that. Wherever I go, I go with that temple. You got it? Any click? <laughs> click. Yep. I hope you practice it. So don't go home and say that I come from a temple. And, I go, and you go to work and you say that I come from a temple. But if you say so, anyone provoke you, you have to say to yourself, I am living in the temple. Okay? And if you heard the bubble, the bubble, the bubble, no, I am in the temple. Let go. The practice is let go, drop. But before you can drop, you have to hear yourself. Listen to yourself. This is my practice. Yeah. Because every daily life, you know the story of the monkey? Just give you an image. You sit comfortable, relaxing in the lounge, very relaxing, sipping tea, very relaxing. Suddenly, one monkey, right? there are six doors, the six doors, and one monkey come to one door and rat on it, right? and go to another door, rat on it. That is a story from a master, rat on it. And another door. You know these are six doors? The six senses, right? Yeah. Raton, raton. Come out, come out. And the master asked the student, How would you do? Hmm? There is a house with six doors. And every door, at each door, one monkey rattle, 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 rattle calling the monkey inside the gate down. So the, master, the student said that, what if the monkey inside sleep tight? You got it, right? So that is a master's story. Now, if in turn you are sitting nicely in your lounge, sipping tea or coffee or mineral water. Some visitor knock at the door. Knock, knock. A thought arise. Come out, here, come out, get out. There are exhibitions, there are so many things. Okay? And what do you do inside? Sipping day, hi, and that's it. Bye bye. And you don't follow the visitor. When the thought arises in your mind, if you are fully in your temple, sit nicely, you spot it straight away. Hey. I acknowledge that you are bye-bye, let's go. And another visitor come, another thought arise. Yes, I acknowledge, let go. So the practice is if you do it regularly, diligently, and always awake fully like that, 
the space in between the two visitors, in between the two thoughts. Before, it's like that. Now, until then. Got it? That is the practice I share with you today. If you understand, please apply and do it every day, every day. You don't need to sit down to meditate. You can stand up waiting for the bus, you still meditate. You still watch people on bus by, meditate. You are your own boss. You are your own teacher. Don't be a slave. Don't be your own slave. Don't allow to be cheated. Okay? Any question? If you, they are not asking here, I remain for a few minutes, you can come and we can exchange. Now, before we end the talk, I give you a quiz. And if you can answer it, hooray. <laughs> there are two people, okay? Two men or two women, all right? We should include the women, shouldn't we? There are two people walking under the rain, like this big rain this afternoon. One get wet and one don't. Who is that and why? Any click? I give you the clue. Vimala Kirti come from a temple. Got it? If you live with your temple, if you live in peace and joy, the heat, the cold, the dry, the rain, does an effect. Correct? So who is that guy? Ponder. Take it home. Good. Yeah? Yeah. Hooray! <laughs> Any question? Anybody want to ask us? Sorry? Any question? Uh, uh, verbal Hui Ken, you know? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the really, really wonderful talk, you know, on uh, your, your Zen way, your Zen way of understanding emptiness. And you ask us to let go, okay? to lessen or to end our suffering. There's no doubt it's true, you know, okay? No doubt about that, yeah. Before I go further, can I ask you, can you, is the, from your point of view, you know, is there any difference between emptiness and no self? And is there any people in between? Oh, is there any, from your point of view, you, do you see any difference between emptiness and no self? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh. Yeah, that's why. When you see from the emptiness, uh. you see the impermanence, yes. and you see the no self. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the same. You come from the emptiness first, uh -huh. and then the impermanence, uh -huh. and then there's no ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that is uh, not true. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. empty. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I explain to you, you know, just now when you're talking you know, about your emptiness, I was thinking if on our terrible way of understanding emptiness, the no self, you know. Yeah. In, you know? Yeah. That's correct. Say in, in the terrible way, yeah. we, we are taught. No you know, self. Yeah. The three characteristics of human beings. Anita, uh, isn't it? Yeah, you no, call no. It Anita. Yeah, no. The three characteristics there's no yeah. s impermanence, yeah. no self, mm. and suffering. You, know? mm. you see? So that, that, yeah. So our, our, yours is emptiness. I will know self, you know, okay? The Buddha told us, okay? For example, he gave a simile, like a 
a stream of flowing river, you know? Correct. It's, yeah, it's just a, 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 we call it river, yeah. but it's not a river, it's just a stream of flowing water, that's yeah. all. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And then uh, coming to the explanation, you can say ourselves, say, say, me, say John or Peter mm. or, or Lisa, okay, okay? Mm. Yeah. There's no self, okay? It's just a series of up and down, that's all. Yeah. You know, our happiness, our and suffering. Let go. Yeah, yeah, let go. yeah, yeah. So that the thing is, it's impermanent, okay? Mm. Mm. And that it's suffering because the suffering is the stress we have, yeah. you know. So it's asking us, it's just a series, there's nothing, you know. Don't hold on to it. Like you said, let go, you know. And it's, easy it's just, said. Yeah. Easy said. I know, I know, <laughs> easy said and done. Easy I know. said. You need to practice, yes. But you, Listen uh, to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's right. Listen to yourself. As you say, yeah. we, we need to practice this thing, okay? <laughs> All so the time. Yeah, once you realize this thing, so it is a. In fact, this, and we have the seven factors of enlightenment, the Bojangas, it is equanimity, you know. Yeah. You know not. So if you realize a problem comes, it's equanimity, this thing, okay? And that, that is. And, and you are there. And, and, yeah, and enlightenment. Yeah. You are Buddha to be. Yes. That's what I he mean, said. Yeah. Okay. But we, that, well, the Theravada way, you know. Yeah. Very so a, simple, uh, but very difficult. Difficult, exactly. To do. <laughs> to, to do. Yes. Shall we transfer the merit? Huh? What is that? Shall we transfer the merit? Say yeah. again. <laughs> oh, talk, yeah, sure. Thank I, you very much for the talk. Yeah. I vow that the merit and virtue from this will go everywhere and reach everyone all of us and all sentient beings so that we will understand and practice the Buddha way. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Any more questions? Thank you. I don't mind sitting here and remaining and I thought she, no more question. Or if you don't want to ask publicly, you can come here and we, we will exchange person. Face to face. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, yes, Ariel. Here. Thank you so much, Venerable Huikin. Please join me in sharing our appreciation for her. Yes, one hand clapping, <laughs> no duality. The teaching is no duality. <laughs> Sorry? <Wonderful>. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm.